Ladies and gentlemen, this here is what I think is the best new $750 gaming PC that you can build today. No coupon codes, no crazy deals or anything like that. And today I'm gonna show you what's inside and then we're gonna benchmark. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to build a brand new $750 gaming PC build. I'm gonna show you the parts list, and then of course, we're gonna benchmark it. And if you're new here and you wanna see more benchmarking or PC building videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But before we get into it, let me quickly introduce the sponsor of today's video, Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is a 13 week class for all of you aspiring iOS and web developers out there. Their 13 week class focuses on providing you only the skills that you actually need to go out there and start your new career and coding, they don't waste time with a filler curriculum like at a traditional college. They also feature student housing at no extra cost, a variety of different classes, including UX design and QA testing, and most importantly, all of this is available at an affordable price. Head on down to that first link in the description to learn more if you're interested in getting that quick boost you need to start your new career in coding and design. All right, so instead of showing you a baller building montage like I normally do, I'm just gonna jump straight into the build and show you the parts list. Like I said in the intro, all of these parts are easy to find at good prices without any crazy deals, so please try to avoid comments that you build something better because you found a GTX 1060 for like 20 bucks last week. The first part up is the CPU and for this build I just had to go with the tried and true Ryzen 5 2600 because this may just be the best value that you can find at its current price point. For around $165 you're getting 6 cores and 12 threads which can boost up to 3.9 gigahertz right out of the box and you're also getting yourself in the AM4 platform which will allow you to upgrade to something beefier in a couple of years. Speaking of AM4, the motherboard that I went with is this MSI B450 Gaming Plus Micro ATX board, which you can usually find for around $80. Now, to be honest, I really went with this board because it fits our red and black theme, but it's also rocking some nice features like an M.2 slot for an NVMe SSD, a USB Type C port for some future proofing, and it even has a BIOS flash button for you daredevil overclockers out there. The next part up is our RAM, and for this build, once again sticking with the red and black theme, I went with this G Skill Rip Jaws 2x8GB kit that's clocked at 3000 megahertz. Ryzen definitely likes fast RAM, and with this kit now being just over over 100 bucks, it was an easy pick. Moving on to the graphics card, this is always a tough one to pick because I usually base these builds based off of the price of the CPU and the GPU, and for a $750 build, I think the best option is an RX 580. This here is an XFX 8GB RX 580, which you can actually usually find for around 200 bucks. For storage, I went with a typical small SSD and large HDD combo, as I went with this 120GB SanDisk SSD to load our operating system and most played games, and then this one tera Seagate Barracuda drive for everything else. I really like this sand disc mounted up here at the top because once again, it matches our theme and makes the build look that much more baller. The power supply I went with is this Cooler Master Masterwatt 650, and the only reason I went with this one was because at the time of purchase, it was exactly $1 more than the 550 watts, so I decided to pick it up. For this build, you'll be absolutely perfectly fine with 550 watts, so just get that one if you don't find the same deal that I did. And finally, to tie up the parts list here is the Corsair Spec 05 case, which I I think is absolutely perfect for our mid-tier black and red themed build. Now it's only rocking a single 120 millimeter fan up front, so definitely feel free to add some more fans in here. But honestly, people overrate airflow sometimes and all of these parts stayed super cool during my testing. So there you have it. That's what the parts list is looking like. You can find all of these parts for a total of around $750 or even cheaper if you show a little bit of patience. With all that out of the way, it's now time for some benchmarks. And for today's testing, I decided to keep every game at 1080p just to keep it consistent, but just know that you can definitely push 1440p in most games for this build. The first game up was Fortnite, obviously, and in 1080p in high settings, I averaged 100 and 10 frames per second. Keep in mind that you can definitely crank this all the way up if you wanted to, but for some reason I always find that Fortnite starts to really tank on those 1% and 0.1% lows, so I personally rather play at high settings. Next up we have Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, definitely a very CPU dependent game here in 2019 still, and in 1080p and high settings I got a very respectable 88 FPS average. Rainbow Six Siege followed up next. For this one I used the built-in benchmarking tool like I do in all my other benchmarking videos, and in 1080p and very high settings I got 
at a ridiculous average of 168 FPS. You probably want to crank it up to 1440p for this one. Counter-Strike Global Offensive followed up next, and in 1080p and high settings, I got an average of 210 FPS. Honestly, guys, do I really need to keep benchmarking this game? If I do, that's fine, but please let me know down in the comment section because I'm kind of scared to take it out of my benchmarking rotation. Another game I'm scared to give up is Grand Theft Auto V, and it's still like a top 5 game on Steam right now, and in 1080p and high settings, I average 118 FPS, and you can see from the 1% and 0.1% lows that this one ran very smoothly. Getting into the newer and tougher to run games though, I fired up Monster Hunter World. Make sure you check out my dedicated benchmarking video on this one if you haven't by the way, and in 1080p and high settings, I average right above that target 60 FPS mark. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was up next, and in 1080p and high settings, but with low post processing, I averaged 55 frames per second. 55 is definitely very smooth to play with, and it's the settings that I would personally recommend, but if you want to hit that 60 FPS mark, you'll have to turn off anti-aliasing or drop it down to medium settings. And finally, the last game up was Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Also just did a benchmarking video on this one, and in 1080p and high settings, I surprisingly got up to a 74 FPS average, despite this one usually making my systems beg for mercy. Well, there you have it. That wraps up my new $750 gaming PC build guide here for early 2019. Now feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet, and definitely hit the subscribe button because next week we got some more benchmarking to do. You don't want to miss that video.